Hi everyone, and welcome back to English Digest. I'm Pat. I'm Leah, and we're on day two of our article about how the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against affirmative action. In other words, they said we sh- or schools should not consider race when they're considering which students to admit into the schools, which goes against what had been happening in the states for some time. And some people say, like some of the justices we talked about yesterday, say. It's a setback to do this. Others say it's a return to a more conservative view on how to go about this process, so that every student gets to be taken care of as an individual. Yeah.、Um, and yet, there's there's definitely a large political argument that can be had about this topic.、Mm. And today, we're going to look at one more aspect of、uh, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision and uh, another uh, particular minority group in the states and their reaction to it. And then we're going to take things over to Taiwan and look at we call it a parallel policy, something、right. similar that is done here with students from an indigenous background in Taiwan, and see how that policy affects them and what people think of it. So let's read through day two. The debate over affirmative action in college admissions was further complicated by the divergence in opinions among Asian American students. Despite being from a minority group in the U.S., some Asian American students applauded the Supreme Court's decision to overturn affirmative action, convinced that applicants should be judged on their accomplishments and abilities. They perceived that the admissions criteria, especially subjective evaluations by admissions officers, discriminated against them, suggesting they had to meet higher standards. Than their African American or Latino contemporaries, research data indicates that even when Asian American applicants excelled in objective academic and extracurricular ratings, they tended to score lower on the subjective personal ratings. In Taiwan, the government has taken a distinct approach to affirmative action to promote educational diversity. And remedy historical disadvantages faced by its indigenous communities. One such policy permits indigenous students with indigenous language proficiency certificates to receive up to a 35% score increase in college entrance exams. However, this policy hasn't been without criticism. Skeptical of these bonus points, some people hold a biased stereotype about indigenous students. Believing they don't study as hard, they sense an unfair advantage despite the legitimate purpose of this policy to attempt to correct past and present-day inequities. Furthermore, there are concerns about whether this policy genuinely strengthens the bond between Indigenous students and their tribal heritages. The endeavors by both the U.S. and Taiwan to pursue racial equality through affirmative action have made it evident that the path is not without challenges. As we reflect and adjust, let's remain focused on the ultimate goal: to create a platform where every student feels cherished, acknowledged, and empowered to reach their fullest potential, regardless of their racial background. Okay, getting into day two, we see the debate over affirmative action in college admissions was further complicated by the divergence of opin- in opinions among. Asian American students. So the debate over affirmative action, the conversation, the argument about affirmative action in college admissions, was made more complicated. Was made more difficult because of a divergence in opinions. When divergence means that there's a multitude of them, not everybody has the same, which would be a convergence, like everybody moving together and having the same attitude. A divergence is everybody moving away and having a diverse number. Of different opinions, and there's a divergence in opinions among Asian American students. So Asian American students 
have a lot of different feelings about this about、mm. affirmative action. Yeah, and you can say divergence or divergence. Exactly, They're both、yeah. okay. So, despite being from a minority group in the U.S., some now I'll emphasize some, not all, <laughs>、um, Asian American students applauded the Supreme Court's decision to overturn affirmative action, convinced that applicants should be judged on their accomplishments and abilities.、Mm. So, in other words, some students who are Asian American. That's their background. That's their racial group. They are a minority group in the U.S.,、yes. so、uh, they're not one of the. They're not a. They're not the majority. They're not. Uh, They don't have the highest percentage, percentage of、like、population. Racial group in there. They applauded this decision. They thought it was great. We agree with it. If you applaud something, you could literally be clapping like you would at the end、yeah. of a play, but you could also just be agreeing with it. You could be going on social media and saying, "This is right. This is the good thing to do." Yeah. Yeah, that would be applauding something. So there, the feeling of this particular kind of、uh, group within the group, the Asian Americans who agree with it, not all.、Uh, Is that yeah? Applicants shouldn't be judged on race; just judge it on our accomplishments, our abilities, our skills, and what we can do. And this, I think, in a lot of ways, is an an ideal situation. In an ideal situation, students are only judged on their accomplishments and their abilities. But there's a lot more to life, and I think that was what affirmative action was trying to do for students who were coming from maybe a more impoverished, poor background, or、uh, a school system that didn't have as strong of an academic background. So there's an argument for both here.、Hmm. Um, Um, they perceived that the admissions criteria, especially subjective evaluations by admissions officers, discriminated against them, suggesting they had to meet higher standards than their African American or Latino contemporaries. So these students who applauded the end of affirmative action felt like they had to work harder. They felt that the admissions criteria, the requirements that they were having to fulfill when they were going through the admissions process, were especially subjective. Subjective, of course, is the opposite of objective. So, subjective things are relying more on your emotional opinion or a personal opinion, whereas an objective thing is like your SAT exam or your test results—things that you don't really have any emotion put into. So, your subjective evaluations would be probably by a person and not by a test. Yeah, and it's just their opinion. They will interview you or check your check out your background and your application letter, and they'll make a personal judgment. That、right. doesn't necessarily have anything to do with great scores or what you've done. Right. And these students felt that this subjectiveness, particularly, discriminated against them. If you discriminate against somebody, you give somebody like less of a chance. You judge somebody more harshly or in a different way than you would somebody else. And they felt like they had to work harder、mm. in this admissions process because they they had to meet higher standards than the other students that were. Around them, their contemporaries. Here are people at, living in the same time as you and having the same life as you, or your contemporaries. And here they would be college students that were applying at the same time you were. Yeah, exactly. And we see that research data indicates that even when Asian American applicants excelled in objective, academic, and extracurricular ratings, they tended to score lower on the subjective. Personal ratings. So、uh, a few things to look at there. So this is what the research data, particularly from those two colleges, it's Harvard and it was at the University of North Carolina、right. that were、yes. looked at. And the data indicates, kind of hints and shows that、uh, Asian American applicants excelled in objective things. We But talked about even when they did. Yeah, we talked about subjective. Here's the objective.、Right. So and they. Uh, Asian American applicants do really well. They excel. They are very, very good at academic things and extracurricular ratings. So, in other words, they get the very, very good academic scores, test scores, and so on. And they do very well at extracurricular things. So. Extracurricular is a—it's a fantastic word, really. It's a very、yeah. long one. It's six syllables. Yeah, there's not many with that. So, cur-、uh, curriculum is what you learn in school. So, if something is extracurricular, it is 
outside school, things you do or learn that are outside your normal school activities that you have to do. So this could be anything from learning music, it could be playing sport, it could be getting involved in the community, joining volunteer groups, yeah, le the leading a club, club or a society. Yeah. It's all of that sort of stuff. So what we see here is this data indicates that. Asian American students, applicants, do really well in their tests. They do really well in extracurricular、uh, things, but do tend to score lower on subjective personal ratings that are given by again these admission officers who are making a personal judgment. And this is a little comment that I would make here about college admissions in general. They have been changing a lot over recent years in the U.S. I have to specify in the U.S.、Um, they have been changing a lot so that the objective things are. Not necessarily as valued in the last few years, especially with COVID, the COVID pandemic, and everything.、Um, a lot of the objective tests were no longer required to get admitted into university, so you no longer had to actually give your SAT or give your ACT to say, "Hey, I want to come to school here,"、mm. um, which means that they have to put the, the the focus on other things, which I think we will be discussing in a bit. But the extracurricular things; those are the things that a lot of students learn how. To game when they、mm. are trying to figure out how to get into university, yeah,、so、maybe they will have a lot of these things, yeah, and do them not necessarily because they're interested in them, but do them because they know it's going to look good on good on the college on application,、yep. exactly, yeah. So yeah, that, and that's I guess that's a reason maybe why they're counted as less because they're things that people can get without really being like super devoted to it. But not this, in every case. Of that's、course. true, but and you can only game so much because you cannot game the admissions process so much because when it comes to the subjective personal ratings, you can't really game that unless you know exactly the person you're going to sit across from when you have your interview, and and you have a connection to that person and you know exactly what that person wants to hear and you know to say it,、hmm. and then you game it. But other than that, you just tend to see if you can show that person that you are having an interview with that you're. A good fit for the college. Yeah, that you you know you're going to benefit the college. It will benefit you, you know, and all of those things. You know, it's been your dream to study there. Whatever it happens to be. So there, we could go into loads more detail on those subjects, but we're going to step away here and take a look at something that's been happening in Taiwan. Before that, though, we're going to take a short break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. I'm Pai 老师今天讲解的是寒假合刊 Unit Sixteen. 第二天的课程，这个单元介绍的是美国高等教育的平权法案。美国最高法院裁定大学招生录取的决定，如果涉及种族考量，就会有违宪之余。今天的内容进一步提到了台湾在原住民教育政策方面的做法。原住民学生如果可以提出原民语言能力认证合格证书，入学考试可以加分。一方面保障原住民受教育的机会。另外一方面，也促进原民语言文化的保存。好，我们一起来看学习重点吧。第一个段落是典型的主题句段落，第一句囊括整个段大意的句子。好，我们请看第一句 ：The debate over。这个句子的意思是，大学招生平权法案的争端因为亚裔学生意见分歧而更加复杂。后面三句就分别说明，到底亚裔学生和其他少数族裔看法到底哪里有差别。好，我们请同学呢看到第二个句子哦。第二个句子主要动词的部分就是从 some Asian American students applauded 这里，请把 applaud 画起来。那这个 applaud 当然不是鼓掌的意思，其实呢也是认同、赞同或者我们讲的称许。那所以呢，基本上有一些亚裔的美国学生，他们其实是认同或觉得，哎，最高法院做出这样子的判决非常的好，就是他们推翻了以前的平权法案的做法。好，那后面呢，则是分词构句的部分，就亚裔的美国学生他们相信。They are 这边所用的是分词构句 ，They are convinced that。那由于是分词构句，所以我们把这个。be 动词去掉了，后面只保留过去分词的部分。再来，请看到第三个句子，请同学特别注意的是第二个逗点之后的 discriminate against。我要特特别提醒大家的是 discriminate， 中文说歧视。那我们中文讲说
不要歧视任何人，后面呢就只要直接加上受词。所以很多同学在使用英文的时候 ，discriminate 后面也会直接加上受词，这是不对的。discriminate 表示歧视的时候，要记得它是不及物动词，必须要加上介系词 against。那 discriminate 如果呢当做及物动词来用，常常都是区别的意思。比方说 ，Can you discriminate good apples from bad ones by their appearance？ 从外观来看，你有没有办法把好苹果跟坏苹果分出来，分区别出来？再来，请同学看到这个句子的最后一个字 contemporaries。请同学特别注意的是，这里我们 contemporaries 后面由于是复数，同学应该判断出来，这应该是名词。没有错，不过它有两个意思，一个呢指的是同时代的人，那在这里呢指的当然不是同时代的，而是指呢就是年龄相仿哦，年龄差不多的，像比方说在你学校里面的这些同才啊，你可以称他们为 my contemporaries at school. We'll take a short break and then we'll be right back with part two of our article. Continuing on in our article, we're going to shift over to Taiwan now, and it says in Taiwan the government has taken a distinct approach to affirmative action to promote educational diversity and remedy historical disadvantages faced by its indigenous communities. So the government is working to make improvements, which is what we talked about in the last day. Ideally, a government is developing and developing and de developing on what historically was there or historically did not work. They want to make improvements, so they're taking distinct approaches, a specific approach to affirmative action. And what are they doing? Well, they're promoting their educational diversity、um, as they go along to try and remedy the historical disadvantages, to cure, to fix, to make better the historical disadvantages that students in Taiwan, if they were from indigenous communities, had to face. Indigenous、mm. means communities that. Have been here for time immemorial, basically、mm. the first peoples of Taiwan. Yeah, before、um, a lot of people came over from China and there over the centuries,、uh, wherever it happens to be. So one such policy or one of these policies permits indigenous students with indigenous language proficiency certificates to receive up to a thirty-five percent score increase in college entrance exams. So the key thing that they need here. These students is a language proficiency certificate, and that will have to be in their own tribal language to say yes, you know your language, you are proficient in it, you've passed a test in it, you can speak it and read it and write it, and you know understand this language in full. In the same way as people would get、uh, TOEIC or. IELTS or whatever to as proficiency certificates for English, there is an equivalent certificate to, certificate to say yes, you, we have proved we've checked you and you can speak your language, this part of your heritage and culture,、uh, to a certain ability to a very high standard. Right, and they're wait waiting that. So again, we were talking yesterday about gaming the app, the admissions process. In a way, this gives a little bit of a game to indigenous students who have that. Efficiency level to give them a little bit more weight in in their admissions process that will help them to、uh, to possibly be admitted into a program. And however, this policy hasn't been without criticism. Any time a policy is put into effect, there is definitely going to be problems that are found with it. Sometimes there are an overwhelming number of problems, and then the policy is scrapped. That's what we'll say. It's like thrown away. It's scrapped. They'll get rid of it. And sometimes people are like, "Er, I don't like this.、Mm, it's not really fair." Er, but slowly the 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 opinions that are not happy with it will kind of die down, and they'll say, "Okay, we're going to keep this going because it." It works. It's better for the students. 
So, what is the criticism of this policy? Well, we see skeptical of these bonus points. Some people hold a biased stereotype about indigenous students, believing they don't study as hard. So, if you're skeptical of something, you don't really believe it. You don't buy it. You kind of think, okay, beyond under the surface of this, it's not doing what it says it's supposed to do. This isn't like really encouraging indigenous students to learn their language culture. No, it's just a, it's just kind of a way of maybe the government saying we feel guilty about the past, so let's just give some extra bonus points. And so the bias, which is a like a, a kind of an unfair belief that you have, or it's certainly a belief that maybe doesn't have an awful lot of facts to、mm. back it up. It's just a strong way you feel based on maybe how you've grown up or what your parents have told、exactly. you is the way it should be. Yeah, they the stereotype is indigenous students don't study as hard. Presumably, because they think, oh, I can study less, but I'll learn my language and get a score increase, so I can get as good a grade without having to do as many as much work on my tests. So these skeptics, these people who are skeptical, they sense an unfair advantage, despite the legitimate purpose of this policy to attempt to correct past and present day inequities. So they sense they 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 feel like there's an unfair advantage, despite the legitimate, which is an, a a reasonable, a legit, a logical, genuine purpose. Right? You can also use this as a verb, legitimate, just to let you know, legitimate. Uh, you put it on with mate instead of mut.、Um, purpose of this policy to attempt to correct past and present day iniquities. Iniquities are when things are unequal. So. If、uh, if you want to talk about a social inequity, when you have a society where there are a lot of poor people in the day to day of your world, then there's a lot of social inequity because poor people are not able to make their way higher up the ladder.、Um, there's probably something blocking them from doing, and that's an inequity. It's、uh, unequal for them. They don't have the opportunities that other people have.、Mm. So this policy was intended to correct that、um, indigenous people, like maybe. Couldn't go to the best schools because of either where they lived, or they didn't have enough money, or they were being held back by other government policies. So, in order to correct this, they're trying to give them、uh, a bit more help now. Some people are looking at this and saying, "Well, this still isn't fair. A lot of those policies have gone, but they've still got bonus points." That's the opinion. That's so, not fair. They yeah. Say. And there is another concern, which is mentioned here. Furthermore, there are concerns about whether this policy genuinely strengthens the bond between Indigenous students and their tribal heritages. And that goes back to what Leah was saying about gaming the system.、Right. In other words, taking advantage of the system and doing things just to get the results, not because it's something you really want to do. The maybe people are saying, well, if all you've got to do is learn the language. That people will just go and learn it. They're not really connecting. They're not taking part in other activities or learning about the history. No, they're just learning the language to get the bonus score, and that's it. As soon as they've got into college, they don't speak it anymore. They kind of leave behind the culture. So the concern is that only making it about language is not doing enough to really connect indigenous people to their. Past to their tribes to their heritages and going to the gaming part of it one more time too is that you have a student who maybe isn't an indigenous population、uh, and member of an indigenous population and they say well wait if I go and I learn the language get a certificate can I also get a certificate don't I also have a right because if the focus is on the proficiency of the language then shouldn't I also have an opportunity there it is they, these are questions that come up any time you know new policy is put out there、mm. the endeavors. By both the U.S. and Taiwan to pursue racial equality through affirmative action, have made it evident that the path is not without challenges. The endeavors, the attempts,、uh, the tries that、uh, both the U.S. and Taiwan have used.、Um, there was an endeavor、uh, space mission,、mm. actually. So it means try. It's kind of a fun big word for it. It sounds exciting when you say it、um, to pursue racial equality. So that's the goal, right? And how Are you doing it? Well, you're pursuing it through affirmative action, and what did it do? Well, it has made it evident, has made it obvious that this process, the path. 
life is not without difficulties. It's not without challenges. It's turbulent. It's bumpy. Yeah, some people are saying it's not doing enough, and some people are saying it's doing too much, and some people are saying it's it's doing it the wrong way, or you've forgotten this, and it's very difficult to get some. There's no way you're going to make everybody happy. You're never going to make everybody happy. So that's why we give this conclusion. As we reflect and adjust, let's remain focused on the ultimate goal: to create a platform where every student feels cherished, acknowledged, and empowered to reach their fullest potential, regardless of their racial background.、Mm, that's a nice sentence. Yeah. So to create a platform, which in this case means to create the situation, to create the this is where we are, this is what everybody is doing, this is how every school or every group works, to create this. Situation where students can feel that they're cherished, so that their schools look after them, their teachers are thinking they're important, they're acknowledged, they're recognised for their abilities and what they can do, and they're empowered. They are given the power. They are given everything they need. They're not held back by anything as they try to do their absolute best. Whether they're Indigenous students, Taiwanese students, whether they're African Americans, Asian Americans, Latin Americans, whatever it happens. Happens to be nothing is blocking them. Everybody is being treated in and given everything they need. When I look at this sentence, it makes me think of、uh, problem-solving、uh, competitions that I did when I was growing up.、Mm-hmm. Uh, you go in and you have a problem, and then you brainstorm a lot of solutions for it, and then you take the best solution and you do an analysis of why all the solutions have their flaws. Like you rate the best solution, and then you write about that best solution and say this is why this is the best solution. So you have to have your goal to start with, right? And this is really the important thing. You want to help the Students, you want to make them feel powerful. You want to take care of them, and that would be the thing to problem solve on. The problem is, is that once you problem solve, once you brainstorm, you don't always have a perfect solution,、mm. and not everybody's going to be on board with the solution that you come up with. So the question is, are you doing more harm than good? Hopefully, you're doing more good than harm.、Mm. Okay, we're going to hand over to our Chinese teacher one more time, and then we'll come back and wrap things up. 再来，我们就看到第二段。第二段的第一个句子 ，The government has taken a distinct approach. 好 ，distinct， 请同学特别注意到的就是，假设我们有东西很类似，像比方说都是美国也好，台湾也好，都针对哦教育定出了政策。那可是呢，他们还是有不一样的地方。像这种类似的同样的种类，可是它有所区别的。不同的，我们就可以用 distinct。那台湾政府的做法是不一样的 ，a distinct approach 有不一样的做法。好，那请同学看到后面，采取不一样的做法来让不同的族裔、族群呢，他们的教育权是平等的。为什么？目的在后面 ，to promote educational diversity and remedy historical disadvantages。这个 remedy。同学要注意是动词，其实呢就是我们要讲的，就修正哦，要导正之前，呃，就是等于是历史上一些历史因素对原住民学生是不公平的。好，再来，请同学看到第三个句子，这又是双重否定了。This policy hasn't been without criticism， 意思是这个政策是受到批评的，是有受到批评的。再来我们看第四个句子。第四个句子的部分呢 ，skeptical of these bonus points. Some people. 好，所以我们知道 skeptical 到底是谁表示 skeptical？ 谁对这些加分呢表示质疑呢？那就是后面 some people 这些人。那因为他们有什么呢？他们有特定的这种刻板印象。对原住民学学生呢，他们是有一些刻板印象，是有偏见的。他们就质疑这些加分的做法。好，那再来，请同学看到第三段的第一个句子。第三段的第一个句子 ，The endeavors by both the U.S. and Taiwan to pursue racial equality。这个部分，请同学把 endeavors 画起来，所以加上 s， 它所指的呢，其实就是美国政府也好，或者台湾政府也好，他们所做的。这些这些措施种种的作为，其实这边呢，其实我们也可以把它替换成 efforts， 
。好，就是美国还有台湾的政府，为了让不同的族群社经地位更加平等，在教育方面实现平权的种种作为，我们都可以把它呢称为这个 endeavors。那最后第二个句子，请同学特别注意到的是，在 and 后面的 empowered 这个字 ，empower 它是。有两个元素组成的 ，e m， 那这个部分呢，就常常会看到在动词前面，那会因为后面的这个字的开头，因为是 p， 它是双纯音，所以我后面呢，我们是一用 m， 也是一样是双纯音，它呢就表示让什么人有能力，所以我们说 empowered， 让原住民的学生有能力可以做到什么事。Reach their fullest potential, 发挥他们的潜能。好，以上是我们针对这个课程第二天的内容所做的中文讲解。谢谢大家。So that's our article finished for today. Some、uh, fairly difficult、uh, issues to kind of process and think、Absolutely. about. No easy answers or solutions here for anyone.、Nope. And I'll go back to something、uh, Leah said at the end of yesterday, and I think also at the start of yesterday.、Um, Read up on this, learn more about it, and kind of decide for yourselves where your what your opinions are here.、Right. Um, we can't tell you what to think. We don't want to tell you what to think. We want、mm. to provide you the information so you、we'll、can go out、you. there. Yeah, and so you can go out there and think about it yourself. Okay, so hopefully you do that. Hopefully you do give these issues some a bit of thought because they are important issues that do deserve a little bit of your time and thought to think about. Um, because they are things that affect a lot of people in many different parts of the world. It's not stuff you can just kind of ignore and say、oh, it doesn't matter to me. Exactly.、Um, but that's all for us. So for English Digest, I'm Pat. I'm Leah. And we'll talk to you again sometime soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.